Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Dirt Nap City, the podcast about interesting dead people, and I'm super happy to have such a great and interesting partner as the living Alex Milam. Alex, how are you? Hey, what's up, Kelly? We talked a little bit about the air in our last episode, yeah. and uh, this time I want to talk to you about the sea. Oh, the sea. Yeah, yeah. All right. Kind we, of we talked about the sea when we talked about um, Shackleton. Yeah, true, true. We talked about the sea when we talked about... Who else was on the sea? Anybody else? Um, Any other seafaring people? Oh, Napoleon. Um, Napoleon? Yeah, he, he did. Well, although I think part of his problem was uh, the British had a better Navy than he did. So he Yeah. Does. And uh, by the way, big shout out to our Patreon supporters. We've got a couple of them now. We've got uh, Al from Austin. We've also got Chris from Austin. So appreciate those guys being early adapters, adopters, and adepters of our Patreon they're they're much appreciated and there's different ways to listen to us now too you don't just have to do it through your um your podcast platforms right can you can you you can watch us now too you can watch us on youtube that's right we have our own youtube channel just search for dirt nap city on youtube you can listen to us on youtube it's interesting because uh some versions of our content are audio only with just a thumbnail even though it's a video file and then some of them are full videos where you see us in all our glory, just like this, if, you, if you're if you into that sort of thing. So lots of options. No, that's that's great. I'm, I'm glad we can we can uh, we can be there for people that want to just watch us. You got to meet people where they are, Alex. Is that true? That is true. That's right. true. As a matter of fact, that was sort of a theme. It's going to be a theme of today's uh, podcast Ooh, a little hint. about... Now, I know you're a big fan of the 20th century, but our, our our subject for today was actually born in 1688 Ooh. in Bridgetown, Barbados, to British parents. He was born into wealth. He inherited land and a sugar plantation. His parents died when he was six, and he are inherited we, all those things. Are we talking about Alexander Hamilton? No, no. I don't know if he was born in Barbados or I know he was born in the Caribbean, but I don't know if it was Barbados, but no. Good good guess though. Um and this might have been a little too or too early for Alexander Hamilton actually, 1688. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, I think he was born a little later than that. But this guy uh was actually in the military. He was in the Barbados militia, reached the rank of major, although there's not really much record of his military service. He was married and had children. Um, he became friends with some people that were even more famous than him. But in 1717, you know, at, at a very young age, still in his 20s at that point, I guess he was 29, he actually left his wife and children for a life of crime. Oh, we must be talking about some sort of pirate. Oh, it yes, we are about some sort of pirate. Like, um, I'm glad you're doing this because I get all the pirates mixed up. Let's see, you got uh, you got Blackbeard, yeah, and you got Bluebeard, yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> Redbeard, <laughs> you got all the beards, yeah, uh, yeah. Frank Beard from ZZ Top, Frank- <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Beard. Beard, who was my uh, Mr. Beard, was my sixth grade um, teacher. Mr. Yeah, Beard, Chris Beard, former Longhorn basketball coach. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Once you get all those guys out of the way, you've got um, Jean Lafitte. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, you know that uh, you know that Long John Silver was a fictional pirate. He wasn't a real pirate. Okay, and. Um, I didn't know that, I don't think. Jack Sparrow, I think he Jack was also Sparrow. a fictional, fictional Cap- pirate. Captain Hook. Captain Hook was also a fictional <laughs> pirate. Dr. Hook. Dr. Hook was a real musician. <laughs> see see, uh, see Yacht, Rock and Roll is Dead. Rock, rock, Yacht Rocker, I think, Dr. Hook. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's. Um, I thought, oh yeah, is that right? He Was he a Yacht Rocker? I think I've named all the pirates I know, haven't I? 
I must have forgotten a good one. Well, this guy, as I said, he was actually friends with Blackbeard, but he was not as famous as Blackbeard by any means. He was also not as good of a pirate. As a matter of fact, he was so bad that he actually ended up dancing the hemp and jig uh, December 10th on 1718, in 1718. Any idea what dancing the hemp and jig is? No, is that like walking the plank? It's kind of like that, only with a rope. It's uh, getting hung. Oh, He was hung in 1718. He got caught uh, at the age of 30 years old in South Carolina. Wow. We're talking about a guy known as the Gentleman Pirate. His name is Steed Bonnet. Steve Bonnet, the Gentleman Steed. Pirate. Steed, S-T-E-D-E. Oh. Steed yeah, Bonnet. Yeah, it's every everything I've typed has been autocorrected to be Steve, but no, it's Steed Bonnet. <laughs> All right. All right, let's hear about him. So you never heard of this guy? <laughs> wow, that's very rare that I ever get somebody you've never heard of. Well, uh, as I said, Steve Bonnet was born into a wealthy English family uh, on the island of Barbados, inherited a uh, sugar plantation, lots of land. Um, he got married. He served in the military. He had a good education. He ended up having uh, children. He ended up having actually uh, three sons and a daughter. One of his one of his sons died at you know very young age, but his other his other two and his daughter lived on. But when they were about five years old, he actually abandoned them for a life of piracy. He decided he'd had enough and took off. Now, there's a lot of debate as to why he took off, but the most famous quote was that he had discomforts in a married state. <laughs> so today we would call this wanderlust, right? Yeah, yeah, midlife crisis, um, mental health issues. Some people think, you know, he he again he was he was one of the wealthiest men in Barbados, but um, he decided he wanted to be a pirate. Now, before we get into what he did, let's just talk about piracy for a second. It's been very much uh, romanticized in the movies oh, yeah. and books and all that sort of thing. But really, he lived right in the romantic age of pirates and in the right in the romantic uh, location for pirates. Because, you know, today you have pirates like these guys off the coast of Somalia that are attacking ships. Mm -hmm. um, th their life doesn't look very romantic, I don't think. No, not at all. He was more of the Jimmy Buffett style of being a pirate, right? As a matter of fact, there's a big question about why pirates had, uh, sh had parrots. You know, if you think, because aren't B Jimmy Buffett fans called parrot heads? Oh, yeah. No. So, so you know why they kept a parrot? Why? Uh, it's like a joke. Uh, no, for real. Um, they did keep cats and dogs on ships to keep rats away and, you know, kind of, um, dogs could be enforcers and, and defense mechanisms and cats would keep the rats away. But a parrot was just a status symbol. It was colorful. It was bright. It was like, it was bling. It was like pirate bling. Yeah. I mean, if you were about to walk into a seafood restaurant and there's a statue of a pirate with a do rag, an eye patch. Yep. Um, a colorful suit. And he doesn't have a pirate. They probably don't have good fish tacos. Do doesn't have a parrot. Yeah, you said doesn't, doesn't have a pirate. <laughs> I was you talking walk into a parrot, parrot restaurant and he doesn't I was have a talking pirate. About the, I was talking about the parrot. <laughs> if he doesn't have a pirate with him, you know, fish tacos are bad. It was very much a status symbol to have a parrot. But if you think about it, you know, a lot of people think that why would this guy run off and become a pirate? Um, the big thing is. A lot of pirates at that time were escaped slaves. This was on the East Coast of the United States. And this was happening like all over the Carolinas, uh, all the way up into New York and all the way down into the Caribbean. Um, but the escaped slaves saw it as a way to uh, get away fr from slavery. And even though it was a rough life, um, they had a chance to earn a reputation. Um, there, there were a lot of... Uh, people of color that were pirates at that time, and a lot of it was because they had escaped slavery. So they would escape slavery and just and just um, basically live on the water on their on their ships and just um, um, that was the. I mean, they weren't they weren't trying to go to the mainland, right? They were just no, they were just looking for a way to make a living to yeah. um, to to sort of be able to earn their rights, and that was the thing: is the pirates' code was very much about. Um, kind of uh, earning the right to move up the ladder, right? To start to start out low and to 
uh, move up the ladder. Um, but another reason that a lot of people kind of saw piracy as a thing, and this is something that they suspect might have been a reason for um, Steed Bonnet, was the dislike for the um, British government at the time. Mm. And this was a way for them through uh, fighting fighting with these uh, merchant ships and taking these merchant ships. It was a way to kind of, you know, wag a finger at the British Empire. Yeah, and this is several years, um, almost a century before uh, the Revolution. Revolutionary War. Yeah, yeah. So, Steed Bonnet, uh, like I said, he's got kids, he's got a wife, he's got a sugar plantation. Uh, he's doing pretty well. He says, "Forget all that," and he goes out and builds a ship. He has a ship uh, built for him. Uh, it's called the Revenge. It's built with uh, ten guns on it. And it's a sloop. Now, do you know what a sloop is? No, but that's an awesome name for a ship, the Revenge. Especially if you just left your wife and kids. That's uh, that's that's really, I mean, he was really all in. Most pirates actually got their ship by stealing it. Whereas um, Steed Bonnet, Steed Bonnet paid for his. Um, he also paid his crew a wage which was unusual. Most of the time they were paid based on uh, performance, meaning they got part of the booty after a, a good raid. He didn't do that. He said, I'll pay you all the wage. And he, he attracted about 70 men to be um, his crew and, and go out. Well, he, it was pretty unusual probably for a pirate to start with money. You say he was, it was, it was. Yeah. And that's exactly why he was called the gentleman pirate. Now, initially he took off, um, towards Virginia and near the entrance of Chesapeake Bay. And he actually had some success right out of the gate. He was able to capture and plunder four, four ships right, right away or, you know, in pretty short order. And it turned out one of those ships was from Bar Barbados. And he was so concerned about people finding out that he had become a pirate that he uh, burned that ship because he didn't want it to go back to Barbados and if for anybody to find out. And then he kind of struggled because he didn't know much about uh, being a seaman or a captain or anything like that. And he had a hard time keeping the, um, the respect of his men. But he decided he was going to go to a place called the Republic of Pirates, which was on the island of New Providence in the Bahamas. So he took off for that area. He wanted to kind of see what this Republic of Pirates was all about. Join the club, learn the handshake, you know get the t-shirt, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And, but while he was on his way, he actually encountered a Spanish man of war and he got into a fight with it. I think he might have accidentally started to attack it and then realized it was a warship and, you know, ended up getting his ship, uh, pretty badly damaged. He got wounded. Uh, about half of his crew was killed and wounded and he did escape, but he ended up getting to, uh, Nassau finally. And he had to kind of um, park it up for a little while, recoup, refit the revenge, put more guns on. He realized he was short on guns. While he was in Nassau, that's where he met Captain Blackbeard. Now, hmm. Captain Blackbeard's real name was Edward Teach. But I, I wondered how they could tell. It was Didn't everybody have a black beard back then? I don't know. I mean, I've got kind of a gray beard going right now. That's so, true. Uh, I, I, but there were also you know, all these guys were in their 30s, too. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, apparently Blackbeard's uh, beard was pretty famous for being shiny, and it was something that was said that he could blind his um, enemies with his beard. Oh, wow. wow. But here's the weirdest thing is Steed Bonnet is this poofy shirt wearing um, guy with a ship. By the way, he had an entire library constructed in his quarters on the, on the Revenge, which was pretty mm -hmm. unusual. Um, he had fine china on the revenge, which was pretty unusual. He was he, a fancy he, lad. He was a fancy lad, and and that didn't go over well with a lot of the the men because they kind of just saw it as being, I don't know, a sissy or something. But actually, um, Edward Teach, aka Captain Blackbeard, was impressed, and they became friends. And what happened is, as I said, um, Steed, the gentleman pirate, had been 
injured during that battle with the Spanish man of war. And he was injured so badly that he really couldn't do his duties. And so he asked Blackbeard, um, and by the way, he had a nicer ship than Blackbeard did at the time. And he asked Blackbeard to come aboard and kind of, um, what is it called when you temporarily, uh, temporarily captain for him? Is that a captain yeah, pro, pro tem? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Understudy. Well, no, no. And that's the thing. Substitute. Blackbeard was a much better pirate and a much better sailor and everything else. But just to run the ship while he recouped. That was the thing. Mm. Now, I assume you mentioned pirate code. I'm sure pirates didn't steal from each other, right? Oh, they did. They did. Oh, they um, did. But at this point, um, he and he and Blackbeard were actually real friends. I mean, they actually became... Um, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of question as to whether or not there was some um, intimate relation between the two of them. And it's not known necessarily, but but they were friends. Um, they... They took care of each other, and so for a while, uh, Blackbeard lived on the Revenge and basically captained the ship. Now, in this whole thing about the relationship they had, there was this thing at the time called uh, matelotage. You ever heard of matelotage? Mm-mm. So it's this agreement that men would have, and it was pretty big with uh pirates from Europe, but it it happened in the Caribbean as well. But they would decide to go into sort of a domestic relationship. um, And it meant that if one of them died, the other one would kind of take over their things. Hmm. And it was kind of like a same-sex marriage. And it came from the word matey, you know, ahoy matey. Sure. So matelotage was something that people would do to say, basically, if I die, you get my stuff. And if you die, I get your stuff. Wow. And they would they would look out for each other. And if you think about it, they were at sea a lot, right? There weren't a lot of right. women at sea. Right. And and um, nobody's really sure what the nature of that relationship between Blackbeard and, and Bonnet was, whether it was, uh, you know, just good friends or a little more than that. But But ultimately, Blackbeard took over his ship, was in command of it for a while, and they had pretty good success. As a matter of fact, they immediately went up to Delaware Bay after he and Blackbeard had uh, become friends and Blackbeard took over. They went up to Delaware Bay and plundered 11 ships successfully. Now, one of the captains from one of those ships survived and was interviewed later and asked about Bonnet. And he described him as walking the deck in his nightshirt, lacking in any command and still unwell from his wounds. <laughs> it's a- it's that's not a glowing review. So they continued plundering ships up and down the U.S. Uh, seaboard, and in 1717, in November, um, they captured a ship called the La Concorde, and it turned out to be a a French slave ship, La Concorde. Do do uh, I have a question? Just a point of clarification: Do pirates are they pretty close to the coast? Yes. Just waiting for people about to come in. So they're not going away because otherwise you, you would never find anybody just out in the sea, right? No, no. They were typically very close to the coast. As a matter of fact, they spent a lot of times at the mouths of rivers that that drained into the into the ocean or in ports because they were raiding um, shipping vessels, right? Or right. Um, they were raiding uh, trading vessels, cargo ships. You have to be far off out enough where the the... Coast Guard or whatever they called it didn't get them like the the uh, although there was no U.S. back then so it was pretty wild yeah it was wild anyway they they did capture this slave ship called the La Concorde and what's interesting about that is um, Blackbeard actually ended up freeing a lot of slaves you know because when they captured a slave ship they would they would uh, release the slaves from their cargo hold. I mean, they were all chained together, right? Being shipped from, from wherever to the U well, to the Americas to serve as slaves or maybe being shipped over to another country from the Americas to serve as slaves. But a lot of those slaves decided they would, um, join the pirates. You know, they were given a choice. You can join the pirates or maybe die. You know, I don't know what their options were. It wasn't that Blackbeard was an abolitionist. He just knew 
free labor was good labor, right? And that these people would have some loyalty to him for freeing them, I suppose. So they were still slaves, but they weren't no, working on plantations. No, no, I, I, I think... You said free labor. Well, free labor as in he didn't have to do any recruiting. They were just right there. And the the way that they would uh, get paid was when they plundered a ship, they would get part of the part of the the booty, right? Oh, they would. And so, okay. so they weren't necessarily paid day to day like Steed uh, Bonnet's men were on salary. That was very unusual. They were paid as they succeeded, paid paid on merit, paid on what they did. And then I believe that even um, pirates of color could move up the ranks. It wasn't. It was really based on how badass a pirate you were, not on your looks. Hmm. Hmm. Although your looks could maybe contribute to how badass a pirate you were. You know, for example, Blackbeard with his shiny black beard that could blind his enemies. So after they captured this La, La Concorde, the French slave ship, brought on the slaves as crewmates, or maybe killed some of them if they didn't want to be pirates but i mean if if you were if you were in the hold of a slave ship some guys rescued you and said join us or die what would you say yeah i'd probably join you yeah yeah so they ended up taking that ship that french slave ship and renaming it queen anne's revenge and that became blackbeard's new ship he took that one and bonnet went back in command of the revenge and so the two of them kind of did some um two ship fighting, you know, two different, the revenge and the Queen Anne's revenge, um, did some fighting, some plundering. And then eventually Bonnet really messed up on a mission. Maybe he hid, maybe he didn't fight. I don't know what happened, but basically his crew lost faith in him and they joined Blackbeard on the Queen Anne's revenge. At that point, Blackbeard said to Bonnet, look, you're a really, you're a really great gentleman. You're not a great pirate. And I think you'd be better <laughs> off to just um, be a passenger on this ship. And uh, he basically took over the Queen Anne's Revenge and the Revenge. And Bonnet became a passenger slash prisoner. A, a, well, a well taken care of passenger on, on board the ships. So, yeah, I guess at that point you pretty much are a prisoner. Yeah, yeah, because his men had already kind of said, no, we're not going to follow you anymore. Um, and he yeah. even told a few of his loyal crew that he wanted to get out of this life and go to Spain or Portugal and kind of live in exile. But um, just had a lot of crises, like midlife crises, this guy. It seems oh, like yeah, he was always yeah. looking for the next thing to do. Well, I mean, that's a pretty big that's a pretty big leap that he took. And I think yeah. whether he regretted it or not, um, he said he did, you know, he said he, he sort of <laughs> wished he could go back to a normal life, but he couldn't go back to Barbados because everybody knew at that point what he had done. <laughs> what a weird life. What a weird decision to make. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the original decision is kind of the weirdest and the most un understood or misunderstood because there's not really much documentation. How old was he when he did that? When he left his family? Oh, well, that was 1717, and he was born in 1688, so 12 plus 17, uh, 29. Okay. 28. He didn't have a very long career as a pirate, by the way. <laughs> so at this point, he's living on, probably on the revenge in his own quarters, but someone else has already been installed as the new captain. Like one of Blackbeard's henchmen is now the captain of the of the revenge. Um, he is sort of just a highfalutin passenger, maybe the maybe the af object of affection for Blackbeard. We don't know yet, but there was a um, there was an offer made by the uh, governor of North Carolina, um, Charles Eden, to actually get clemency. I think I'm using that word correctly. Clemency is when it, forgiveness. He could be pardoned if he turned himself in, swore off uh, pirating, and became a privateer. And the privateer would actually fight against the Spanish and their shipping interests. So do you know what a privateer is? Well, I thought it had something to do with being a pirate, but no, I'm not so sure. Well, it does. It does. You're you're basically a government-sanctioned pirate. You're, you're, uh, you're paid okay. 
to be a pirate, but you can only attack ships of the enemy. So he was given a pardon by the governor of North Carolina and promised to be a uh, privateer and fight against Spanish ship shipping ships. And and Blackbeard had kind of convinced him he should do this because this thing went out, this this notice went out to all pirates. The piracy was a big problem back then, right? And so this thing went out to all pirates saying, if you will uh, mend your ways and uh, promise not to do it anymore, we'll make you a privateer, you'll be forgiven, and you can have a better life and not worry about hanging. Yeah, because otherwise the states aren't getting, or colonies aren't getting any other stuff that they're buying from these other... Right. These so countries. this is a win-win. They they get rid of pirates attacking their ships and they have pirates attacking the Spanish, which is what they wanted. Anyway, he takes this offer, but then after a short period of time, I mean, we're talking weeks here after he gets his pardon, he gets back into pirating. You know, it's a bug. He can't get over it. He's back on the revenge somehow, but now he actually... um changes the name of the revenge to the Royal James. And he changes his name to Captain Thomas. Now, I've heard of that name, Captain Thomas, but he does this because he doesn't want to lose a pardon. He wants everybody to think that Steed Bonnet is, is you know, a privateer on the revenge. And then Captain <laughs> Thomas on the Royal James is a totally different guy. <laughs> I've never heard this story, but I like it. He goes as far as to actually um, pretend to trade with vessels that he's robbing so now he's robbing vessels but he gives them something in return and saying that he's trading with them so that's, that's this funny. is sort of a half-hearted way of kind of keeping his pardon intact did he have a fake mustache that he wore as uh... <laughs> a fake parrot he had a, he had a stuffed <laughs> parrot he actually ended up um ravaging pillaging stealing from uh, a lot more vessels, like more than 10 more vessels, um, taking prisoners, rebuilding his crew because he had lost a lot of his crew and was um, even taking on more ships. Like he actually had two more sloops in his fleet. So it turns out he was a pretty good pirate. At this point, he was doing okay. And a pretty good liar, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he it, it, it fooled everybody. I mean, of course, there weren't photographs back then, so nobody was really sure what he looked like, right? You had a description, you might have a sketch. Um, so after a little while, though, he ended up getting into another scrape with another ship, and he has his his um, the Royal James, aka the Revenge, gets um, kind of damaged, right? So he's got to go get it fixed. So he anchors in Cape Fear River, which is, I believe, in South Carolina, okay, near Charleston. Mm -hmm. And this is in August of 1718. So this is, you know, he's been a pirate for a little over a year at this point. He's he's starting to get his his sea legs about him. And what happens is he's anchored to to do some repairs in the Cape Fear River. And word gets out that there's pirate ships anchored in the Cape Fear River. And uh, Robert Johnson, who is the governor of South Carolina, now before he was pardoned by the governor of North Carolina, now the governor of South Carolina sends out a guy named Colonel William Rett to lead a naval expedition to, to fight these pirates and to, to go get them in the Cape Fear River. So Rett arrives on September 26th with two sloops, they have eight guns each. One was called the Henry and one was called the Sea Nymph. And he's got about 135 men. Bonnet at the time only had 45 men. And this um, Navy guy, w Colonel William Rett, has 130 men. So he's pretty outnumbered, like three to one kind of thing. On September 27th, uh, Bonnet decided to uh, try to escape out of this mouth of the river because he's trying to get back to the ocean and he's blocked. Uh, Rhett opens fire on him and they get into this kind of, I, I guess you'd almost call it slow motion battle because mm -hmm. these are big ships that don't move very fast and they're only powered by the wind. So they have right. to kind of like, you know, hoist the mainsail and get the wind going in the right direction and then reload the cannon and put in the powder and, you know, nothing happens super quickly. I don't think. And most of the cannon shots probably don't hit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's 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 a lot of uh, a lot of hoopla. 
It's like the game Battleship where you'd miss and you miss and you miss. You suck and you my hit. Battleship. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it is only even, even more crude, right? And so this goes on for about six hours, this battle between Rhett and Bonnet. And pretty soon the tide changes. Well, first of all, um, uh, Rhett's ships get stuck in, in low tide and low water you know, in this river mouth, uh, near the Atlantic. And then, um, bonnet ship gets stuck, but then Rhett ship actually gets a high tide and is able to get out. And that's when they were able to, um, basically make the Royal James surrender. And, and so what happened is, uh, Rhett had come demanded surrender. Bonnet refused at first and, threatened to shoot anybody on his crew who actually took the surrender. Um, but the crew eventually won him over and raised the white flag. Now you could raise the white flag. There was also a thing called raising the red flag. Are you familiar with what that means? So the white flag is surrender. Yeah. I don't know what the red flag would, would mean. When you raise the red flag, it meant you were going to give no quarter. And to give no quarter meant you would show no mercy in a fight. So basically, everyone would die. So when you did that, it was giving the other guys an opportunity to, you know, back down, surrender, whatever. Um, or if you don't do it now, this fight is to the death. They didn't do that. That was what uh, Bonnet wanted to do. But you can't bluff on that, by the way. You can't bluff. If you raise that red flag. It's over. Once you raise the red flag, you can't raise the white flag immediately after. It's kind of, <laughs> there's no do overs, right? Um, it's part of the pirate's way. That would be, that would be the, yeah, that would be really, really uh, chicken shit thing to do, right? It's, yeah. And again, it's called uh, give, giving no quarter. We're going to give no yeah. quarter. We're going to give no mercy in pirate language. Um, so at this point, the ship surrendered. They were all taken by Rhett back to Charlestown, which was actually called Charlestown at the time, you know, two words. It's now Charles Charleston. Funny how that happened. And they were held, but they held Bonnet and his first mate and his boatswain for in a separate place for about three weeks. And they held the rest of his crew somewhere else. Don't know why they did that, but the place where Bonnet and his boatswain and his first mate were held was actually at the home of the town marshal, and it was sort of low security. And I guess it's because he was a gentleman, so they figured he deserved. You know, there was a lot of um, hierarchy back then, right? So, and they knew he was a gentleman because of his shirt. That's the funny part. Right, right, his puffy shirt. <laughs> well, I mean, they figured out who he was, right? They knew if at you this could point. get a hold of one of those shirts, you right, you immediately, <laughs> and a parrot. No, a parrot doesn't do you any good because a parrot means you're a a, a blingy a pirate. But if you have, if you're a gentleman and you have one of these shirts, they knew who he was. Uh, they they put him there. He escaped, and that really ticked off um, the governor, who put a bounty of seven hundred pounds on his head, and he was eventually tracked down to a place called Sullivan's Island and he was captured after uh, Rhett and his men came in and killed the other men that were with him. He escaped with uh, uh, his boatswain and his um, first mate. They killed the boatswain and the first mate. And he also had a slave and a native American with him who he promised he would give them a good position on his next pirate ship. If they came with him, uh, they were all killed. Bonnet was not, he was taken to a more secure prison in Charlestown, and he was put on trial. Now, while awaiting trial, he actually kind of charmed the city of Charlestown, and there was somewhat of an uprising in his defense. People thought that he said that he had been a victim, that he wasn't really, you know, he was a gentleman, and he had been under the influence of Blackbeard and these other pirates, and oh, he gosh. hadn't ever meant to hurt anybody and all this stuff. Well, the judge wasn't hearing any of it, and eventually, on December tenth of seventeen eighteen, he um, what did he what was it called again? He uh, on December tenth oh, of seventeen eighteen, he danced the hempen jig. Hempen jig, uh, the hempen being the rope, 
Yeah, like a hemp, hemp rope. Hemp rope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a scallywag. Uh, he he seems like the kind of guy that today, in 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 contemporary times, he would have been one of those guys. Well, I was going to say he'd be one of those guys that had like multiple families. Like he'd, you know, have a right, family going right. on here and then trying to balance another one. And and you, you see these guys sometimes they, they get caught or when they died, all these different wives come out of the woodwork. and Yeah, yeah. Um, on trial for all, a whole bunch of different things. Um, yeah, just kind of know, a con man. Yep, yep. Could be president. So it's 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 funny that that those kind of people exist in all times, I and mean, just depending what what uh, what the times call for, uh, they, their job changes. But those people exist all the time. So he never reigned into Blackbeard again, huh? After their after their no. As a matter of fact, Blackbeard had gone back and uh, taken some of the treasure that the two of them had hidden together. And he was pretty pissed about that. Uh, Bonnet was pretty pissed. And he did try to um, get revenge on Blackbeard. He tried to find him and get to him, but he could never find him. Blackbeard was a good sailor, uh, you know, a much better sailor. And um, he actually, Blackbeard actually died uh, shortly after Bonnet, like I think was captured. And, you know, they really were cracking down on the, on the pirates at the time. Now, a couple of interesting things about Steed Bonnet. Um, one thing is that he supposedly, according to interviews with his men, he was one of the few pirates that actually made people walk the plank. That was not really a common thing back then. Most most men just got, you know, got their heads chopped off or, you know, run through with a with a cutlass or whatever. But he liked to make men walk the plank. Yeah, because he was like a pretend pirate. He he wanted to be a pirate. Right, right. He didn't he didn't like the idea of, of uh, stabbing somebody. It was it was much less bloody and messy to you tied them first, right? So they were bound. They couldn't swim, so they would basically have to walk off the end and probably drown because they couldn't swim, you know, unless they could get out of the ropes or the hemp. But that was one of the things he did that most pirates didn't do back then. Another interesting thing about pirates in that day, they had a drink. Remember what the pirate drink was called? Ooh, uh, it was some sort of rum punch. Uh, what, what was it? It was grog. Oh, grog. It's called grog. grog. And Is grog like was, no, you're right. It was rum. It was a uh, rum mixed with water. And then usually something, some sort of citrus with vitamin C to fight off scurvy. Oh, uh, I wonder if Captain Morgan was a real guy. <laughs> we'll have to find out. Maybe we could get this episode sponsored by Captain Morgan. <laughs> if you're listening, put your right leg up or is it your left leg? A um, couple of famous pirate drinks that were around. And again, you're right. Most of these drinks had some sort of juice or citrus in them to ward off the scurvy. There's one called the Fog Cutter. Now, that sounds more like somebody with gas to me than, than a <laughs> pirate drink. What, what was in the Fog Cutter? Uh, I don't have the, all the ingredients, but you can look it up. Um, it, it did have rum in it, though. So each one of these ships had to have a mixologist also on the right, planet. right, and and that's probably something Steed Bonnet would have liked, right? To have yeah, a I was uh, say. have a hey, hey, hey governor. <laughs> um, they had one called the Bumbo, and then this drink called the Barbary Coast was actually made with scotch and gin. It was a, sort of an exception; it didn't have rum in it. So, yeah, I, I, w- I wouldn't like that. And then the whole reason I started doing this episode was because I started watching this show. It's on HBO. Um, called Our Flag Means Death. Have you heard of that? I've heard of it. Yeah, so it's this silly, silly show about pirates. Um, it has Rise Darby as Bonnet and Taka, uh, Taika Watiti as Blackbeard. Yeah, oh yeah, who, I like him. You know who that guy is? Am yeah, I saying it yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Taika Watiti. Um, anyway, what's interesting is I started watching that show I like uh, Rise Darby from Flight of the Concords. Did you ever mm-hmm. see Flight of the Concords? He yeah, was the oh, manager. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked him, and it's silly. My wife turned it off. She was like, no, I'm not watching this. This is stupid. And it is pretty stupid. But what's interesting is then I decided to use um, Steed Bonnet as, you know, I realized he was a real person. The show actually follows their uh, real life pretty closely. Like it's all stupid and silly, 
but a lot of the things that happen in the show are based on actual real events, which I thought was yeah, I'm, interesting. I'm getting the the feeling that things were stupid and silly out on the sea back then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if if you call uh, cleaving him to the brisket stupid and silly, which is where you cut a man in half with your sword. I mean, there was some violence too. Don't get me wrong. I just love the idea though that this guy who had it made, he was rich, he had a family, he was like head of a sugar plantation. He's like. There's got to be more out there. <laughs> right. Be a pirate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he goes and and is a pirate and then suffered all the concerts. It'd be like me saying, you know, I want to be a drug dealer. And then he dies <laughs> at the age of 30. Yeah. You know, two, yeah. He, he was only a pirate for two years. Very, very short, um, very short career in pirating. But, you know, he, he probably got everything he wanted out of it. He got to meet Blackbeard. He got to hang out with with pirates he got to get in a lot of scrapes i mean if that's what he wanted he got the full life right i think he got it for a little while and then regretted it because he apparently was pretty pretty um like he was he begged a lot at the end you know i promise i promise to be better of course he had already done that once and received a pardon and then he escaped and and you know he, he did a lot of contradictory things but steed steed bonnet um you know let's pour a a glass of or or a what would you call it? Uh, what did they call cups back then? Sure, a chalice. Yeah, sure. Why not? He would have had a chalice. The rest of the guys would have, you know, probably drink out of a man's skull. But he would <laughs> right. have had a chalice, and that was a good drink. It was called the Man Skull. <laughs> That's Steed Bonnet, uh, the gentleman pirate. If you enjoyed this episode, hope you'll check out more. I think this is our first pirate episode, right? Yeah, it doesn't seem like it is, but I I mean I think we've we've talked about people that if they were born in the right time, they would have been pirates. You know, it yeah. was this very specific time period. If you're living on the coast and that it probably looked ro- romantic and then like you like said, he got in over his, yeah, probably. I feel like he got in over his head. Yeah, he did. He did. Mistakes were made, but it makes for a good story and it makes for a good podcast. Yeah, and my favorite thing is just realizing that guys like him are timeless. They just, it depends on when they live, but they exist in our time too. Oh yeah, there's plenty of them out there. Well, hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks, Alex, for uh, listening to The Gentleman Pirate. I loved it. Bye. Page 19, I was kidnapped by Turkish pirates.